I don't follow rules and they don't like that. I was skipping school to get my sack right. My bitch takes me and asks why I don't text back. My dog got out of prison and went right back. These brand new don't step on my balances. I'ma hit that if she let me. They don't like how I talk hit that. that. Yeah. Flooded out my wrist, a puddle dripping. 42, I'm steady sipping. Yeah, I'm on and I'm off that. Yeah. These brand new don't step on my balances. I'ma hit that if she let me. They don't like how I talk that. Yeah. Flooded out my wrist, a puddle dripping. 42, I'm steady sipping. Yeah, I'm on and I'm off that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't follow rules and they don't like that. Hit the club with wife, he brought a dime back. Yeah, hit the three twice and ran it right back. I'm only here tonight, cause in the morning got a flight back. Uh, talking it, but you ain't living like that. The Porsche cost a hundred, this is twice that. Flooded on my diamonds, pulling spring. Back in Oakland, I'm a king. I know in Halsey is a ting. Yeah, right detail, that's not a speck of dust on it. Uh, I'ma get the bag, you can put some trust on it. Uh, everything is new, so it's never rust on it. And her booty so big, you can park a bus on it. <laughs> These brand new don't step on my balances. I'ma hit that if she let me. They don't like how I talk that. Yeah. Flooded out my wrist, a puddle dripping. 42, I'm steady sipping. Yeah, I'm on and I'm off that. Yeah. These brand new don't step on my balances. I'ma hit that if she let me. They don't like how I talk that. Yeah. Flooded out my wrist, a puddle dripping. 42, I'm steady sipping. Yeah, I'm on and I'm off that. Hey, you there? Thumbs up the video right now if you like Ferraris, because we're gonna go get one. Let's get into the vlog. Alright, okay, uh, let's um, start the engine and we'll figure it out as we go along. <laughs> but a uh, big shout out to Lewis Motors and there's just an amazing uh, car dealership in Dublin. I'm friends with Alan Lewis, he's the owner, and they have the best cars in Dublin. So <laughs> thank you so much for this, it's definitely brightening up our day. All right. Oh God. Well, last time I drove one of these was actually in Dubai. It was a yellow one, but it was a way older model. Uh, I think this one's like 2012 or something. The other one was like 2007, 2008. That's the cool thing about Ferraris as well. Like they don't have to be brand new. They obviously, you know, hold on to their quality. And kind of some of the older models are like, you know, they've got a certain look to them. They're kind of cooler. Uh, like I saw a really old Ferrari not too long ago. It's like the one out of the Wolf of Wall Street. Super cool. How <laughs> <laughs> do you put the windows down? It's like a spaceship. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh! American muscle car, it's like you put the foot down and then after it a while it, just, it roars, yeah, yeah, it kicks yeah. it. Whereas this, no, I was, you I was touch it slightly, you do a slight touch on it and it takes off. We're giving everyone spins around the block now. That's <laughs> how so we do it in a raw gym. <laughs> not too bad, not too bad. That's like the only pre workout you'll ever need. Jesus, it's like it's like three scoops of Ghost Legend. This can't code lips it. <laughs> All right, so we're just pulling out of Lewis Motors. We switched the whip. This time we're going for the i8, and already you can feel that it's like electric, you know, or hybrid, whatever it is. And the acceleration, it's a little bit better, it's smoother. I actually think I like this a little bit better. I like the look of the Ferrari more. It's more badass, it's like, it's more petrol, it's more diesel. But this, I could see myself driving it more often, and like, 
You know, when I get in that Ferrari, I'm like worried. I'm like, oh my God, with this, feel a little bit more calm and uh, like something I drive every day. So yeah, let's uh, go out into the motorway, open it up, and then uh, we'll get to the gym at some stage today. <laughs> uh, we have to rev it up a little bit there, took it out onto the highway. Like, it's an amazing car, don't get me wrong. Obviously, you know, very efficient as well. You even have like the petrol gauge here and then the electricity gauge here. But it's like, it's chill to drive. Like I'm chill driving it, you know, whereas the Ferrari, I felt something. Ferrari was like a pure adrenaline rush. Um, so I think between the i8 or the Ferrari, if you want something out of the ordinary, you gotta go with Ferrari. Me, me, me at the London. If you find time, we can run one. Talk about some things we can undo. What's going on everyone? So we're just about to go hit legs and what we're going to do is we're going to kill two birds with one stone. We're going to have a little chat, a little Q&A here, which I actually haven't done in so long, just a sit down Q&A. Uh, I got all the questions from Instagram, I love that feature, but so we're going to overlay the footage of tonight's legs and ab day and we're going to have a little bit of a chat. So sit back, relax, give the video a thumbs up, let's get into it. How did you and Linda meet? So many questions about Linda. Uh, we're going to Sandrini on Sunday, as I said. So we're going to do a sit down couples video and um, just kind of have a chat. Like, you know, they're, they're always juicy videos. So we're really looking forward to doing it. Typical time spent in the gym and tips for how to not feel guilty on off days. I would say on average an hour. And like, you shouldn't feel guilty if like, you know, you fall off in any way in life. You have a bad, lazy day where, you know, you don't work as hard or you don't go to the gym or you're not on point with your, with your diet. You gotta realize, like, not every day is gonna be 100%. Not every day is even gonna be close to 100%, okay? I miss days as well, everyone does. You just gotta, like, what are you gonna do, give up? You know, no, you're gonna get back on the horse. So that's it, you know, just don't think much of it. Just get back on it. Will you compete again 100%? percent okay after summer shredding and even after watching everyone's cutting series i want to get like super dice again and get on stage i don't even care if i win like you know christian had an unbelievable summer shredding series there and you know what what, what place did he come in he, he didn't he didn't win anyways but it was still amazing he looked amazing and it was great content so i'm 100 competing this uh competing next year and yeah very motivated after seeing everyone's um competitions and everyone's cuts this year you know i got really super lean like fully visible six pack for the muscle and fitness shoot and for summer in general there's a big difference between that and being stage lean being stage lean is just <laughs> stupid shredded it, it's crazy a lot of people it's hard for people outside the fitness industry to understand how lean stage lean is but yes next year five major factor keys to be successful if you know them please tell me oh, i'm still trying to figure them out have you ever suffered from any injury yeah uh, my wrist is kind of sprained at the moment i've torn my shoulder joint back when i played rugby but and i was in the sling for a few weeks uh but thankfully like nothing really bad what was the turning point from job to entrepreneur full time this is something i talk about a lot and i call it the magic number theory okay i think i coined that but it's the moment your side gig starts making more or as much as your main job your main source of income and once you do that it's safe to go so i was earning average or minimum wage in ireland is 1850 at least it was a couple of years ago when i was working nine to five in an office and i remember my coaching business and i did lips of fitness merch one month that earned 2000 euro and walked into my boss and said hey look i'm gonna try to go full time with this give it 100 percent he was super cool about it i did that and once you put 100 percent in something it's gonna grow much faster it's gonna grow rapidly so that was a great decision but it was still very calculated right i didn't just quit my job with no source of income and you know I, I saw saw the potential in doing my own fitness business do you ever play video games no I've not played video games in years and um, when I was like say between the ages of 12 to 20 I used to love Grand Theft Auto love Call of Duty I'd honestly I'd sit down and eight hours would go by I love campaign mode and I love the the story in GTA and honestly eight hours would vanish like that it's crazy like it's it's nuts it's actually like it doesn't even seem like time goes by that's that fast you get sucked into it so I, I know nowadays video games is like one of the most profitable businesses it's huge nowadays back then when i was playing it there was no money to be earned so it's a different story nowadays but i wouldn't trust myself to do it now 
um, I don't have the time either. But I, I do think gaming is actually hella cool, um, especially all the gamers on YouTube, like FaZe Clan interests me a lot. Do you have a certain goal to get to? Always have a goal. Like I always have something to work towards, but you get there and you're just like, all right, on to the next one. So. I don't have a certain goal, it's just constantly changing, constantly updating. What inspired you to get into fitness? Rugby, was I wanted to get bigger and stronger for rugby. I played rugby since I was 12, uh, but then when I finished school, I was around like 18, 19, I started reading bodybuilding magazines, uh, looking at YouTube videos like Z's, uh, Mark Fit was one of them who I'm actually good pals with now, uh, Greg Plitt, RIP, uh, he was a huge inspiration of mine, Steve Cook, I remember I followed Steve, you know, 2,000 followers, that was insane, So. You know, a bunch of those guys um, were inspirations for me to kind of like chase an aesthetic physique, but what first made me enter the weights room was rugby. And that, that's also why the, the Muslim Fitness magazine meant so much to me. Like I literally used to cut out pictures and pin them on my wall in school and in my locker. Uh, so, so it's just crazy. Like it, it's, it's hard for me to wrap my head around. Okay, pro tip, this is like a weird thing I always do, but it's a game changer, I promise you, right? So one thing, I can't drink like warm drinks, like warm water, warm beer. Is there anything worse than warm beer? No. So what I do with my shakers is I put a tiny bit of water, right, that much, and I close it and I put them in the freezer, usually in the morning or at night, and you wake up and there's just like, it's all frozen and it's like super cold and there's just like a tiny bit of ice going up the side of it, so. Do this. So when you fill up your shaker, squeeze it, and then you've got a big ice cube right there. It's got that ice cold water. So there you go. Pro tip: a little bit of water in your shaker, put it in the freezer. Thank you later. What's your opinion on Instagram removing the number of likes on posts? I think it's cool that if you we're not comparing each other to like, oh, he got that many likes, how much likes did I get? Or you're not like posting a picture just for the sake of likes. I think that'll encourage most people to be more creative and actually just post what they want to post, which makes for a better platform. But then again, it's interesting to see, you know, how much likes a picture get or how, how are you meant to tell if like a photo goes viral or if a video goes viral. So there's pros and cons to it, but all in all, I, I'm kind of indifferent to it. And again, it hasn't, I, I haven't noticed it. Uh, it hasn't affected my account. But yeah, I think overall, it's, it's cool, it's grand. Instagram and mental health, specifically in regards to confidence issues. I guess that kind of wraps into the last point I made about always comparing ourselves you know, to the next person. I think with social media, um, it's constantly in our face, so we're always comparing ourselves to other people, which is, is a terrible thing to do. But if it's not social media, it's gonna be something else, okay? It's gonna be TV, you see MTV Cribs, you know, these mansions, you see cars, you see movie stars, even you compare yourself to a character in a movie, see someone walking down the street, we're constantly comparing ourselves and looking at what other people are doing. And no matter what media that's on, it's gonna affect your mindset, it's gonna throw you off a little bit. So I really think comparison is the tea for joy and that's what affects us. But yeah, you know, social media, I definitely think it can make you more anxious and more depressed. Cause it's, it's constantly, look, look, it's like a phone's attached to my hand, you know, it's constantly in front of us. So I think it's important not take it too seriously and, and always remind yourself of that. But it's just virtual reality pretty much. This leg press is so good, but it's so hard to load up. These short arms can't reach the fucking bar up there. Right now it's loaded up, so let's take advantage. Best place to go in Ibiza. It's between Playa de Mbasa and San Antonio. San Antonio this year is killing it, especially with Ocean Beach. Shout out to Wayne Lineker. He's absolutely killing it with that. But I think Bossa, it's got like space and high and all the super clubs. Either way, like whichever one you go to, you're gonna have a great time. If I choose one right now, it would be Bossa. Sorry, Wayne. How do you cook your chicken on the stove? Pro game, okay? Put it in the pan, right? Heat the pan up, have it cooking away. Spray a bit more cooking spray on it and then put it under the grill. So it's cooking from below and then the grill, it's like torching it from above, cooks super fast. Uh, always cooks all the way through and it's really tasty. Best way to make money online, okay? I find that digital products are the best way. Um, that can be like eBooks, apps, training guides, um, even kind of online webinars. They're just pure profit. It's, it's literally just pure profit. All you need is a Wi-Fi connection, which you've got anyways. Whereas if you make a physical product, like you sell clothing online, super profitable as well, of course. But you know, you got shipping, you got storage, you got the, the actual manufacturing costs. 
Um, there's, there's so much things that come into play, whereas digital products, very simple and they're very easy to market. And they're very easy because you get emailed them straight away, so they're very easy to sell. So best way to make money online, in my opinion, is digital products. Would you live in London or LA? Definitely LA. If I'm gonna move from Dublin, like I, I can get to London in like under an hour, you know, on a flight. Um, so if I ever wanna go to London, I can just go to London. The weather is pretty much the same, like we're on the same stratosphere. No, 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 hemisphere. That's it. We're on, on the same wavelength, whatever. But, you know, LA is just, the weather is perfect. Uh, people there are super outgoing, and I, I just love the beaches. So, yeah, if I was to move, it would be LA. I actually really want to move to LA for a while. Should I reach out to a protein company or just wait and see if I get sponsored? If you really like the company, um, definitely go reach out to them. A ton of like brand deals or collaborations I've got, I reach out to them. You know, nowadays there's like so much influencers, there's so many people making YouTube videos and Instagram videos. The companies, like, they don't even know where to begin. So I say there's no harm in reaching out to them. Uh, put together a really good email, even DM them on Instagram. Usually they'll end up being like, shoot an email to you know, John at marketing, at Ghost or whatever, and it'll just turn into an email conversation. But yeah, I, I think approach Approaching is great. What's your advice for a young bodybuilder trying to make a name for himself? Document your your process or your progress as a young bodybuilder. Like if you're a young bodybuilder, you're probably making all these new gains, seeing really good progress. You know, take progress pictures. You know, show your progress over time. You know, let people follow the journey. Kind of even create a story over it. You know, it's awesome. Like getting into bodybuilding at a young age. Uh, so document it and also provide some value. You know, educate yourself and dispel myths, talk about proper nutrition training techniques, as uh, so document it and, and enjoy it. What's your favorite ghost product? The protein and creatine are amazing, but if I say something different, the pump is like kind of no other product that's out there. Like, you know, you can get some awesome whey proteins from other companies as well, but I think ghost pump is something special. Like I legit noticed the difference. I was thinking before I take an Instagram picture. To be honest, pump, lighting, Gold man, you're on the cover of Muscle Fitness in no time. Best ways to maintain strength on a cut. I would say like mark down the weights you're lifting on your main compound movements at like the peak of your bulk or just at the very end of your bulk, the beginning of your cut, all the same. And be say to yourself mentally, I am not gonna go below that. So 100k in the bar, 100kg on the bar. Just say, I am not gonna go below 100kg. Really psych yourself up and, and mentally get that in your head. Same goes with any lift. And if you maintain your strength, um, you're gonna maintain a ton of muscle as well. Uh, so that's kind of like my mental cue for maintaining strength on a car. When are you getting a new car? You've had the bends a while. I've had it just about a year. Give me a break. I'm trying to keep up, guys. Please, did you see the Ferrari today, the i8? <laughs> Please. We're getting a new car soon. Did you ever think you'd become so successful? I don't even think I'm successful. Like, in the grand scheme of things, like, I think there's just. It depends what you even define success as, but I don't know, I'm really happy. Uh, I always like planned on doing big things, but in the grand scheme of things, like I don't know if I'm, I'm really successful. How good a year has 2019 been so far? It's been absolutely amazing. You know, I'm always trying to like, you always say to yourself like, oh, you're getting better every year, but like this one truly has been just phenomenal. And, and I'm kind of like wondering like, how can things get better? Like I'm so fulfilled. I'm doing great in my career. I'm just really happy with the relationships in my life. 2019, actually, if I was to choose one thing that's been great this year, it's been relationships, which is just such an important part of life. Uh, but yeah, it really has been an amazing year, and I don't know how 2020 will top it. Still got like five, six months to go, so let's kill it. Did it take confidence to start YouTube, or did you not care about what anyone taught? It was kind of a burned bridges moment, like no job. I dropped out of college. I was like, who gives a fuck? Like, I got, <laughs> I got nothing else to do. I was like, I love fitness. I'm gonna start documenting it. I wanna be in the fitness industry. I'm gonna you know, show everyone my journey. Those videos are still there. First ever video I've ever uploaded. You can see me living in the, the weird house. You know, you, you, me and Blas were looking at some old videos the other day and <laughs> safe to say the background has changed. <laughs> it was just like a kind of burn the bridges moment. Like, I, I just didn't care, you know? There's nothing to really care about. I was like, whatever, I ain't got nothing to lose. How do you think the future fitness industry will look like? That is a really good question, I have to think about that. Like, it's just getting more high production and more quality every year, but I have seen, especially in the last year, a kind of recent turnaround to going back to more like informative, 
spoken content. I also think the rise of podcasts in the last year has had a big effect on it. I think people now, instead of flashy cinematics, people just want spoken word and people want you know, information and advice and value. Um, so I think that's going to affect it, which I think is great. But the production will always keep going up. So I think that's a good thing, you know? It's like you go back to YouTube Fitness like three, four years ago and it had like a certain quality to it. It was kind of like really nice and like homely or something. Um, but I think, you know, you gotta keep up the times changing, you gotta, you gotta evolve. Uh, I think the future will be even more kind of like professional, but I think things are going back to more like just good old quality information, spoken word. So yeah, I look forward to it. Either way, with the trends, you just gotta adapt to it. Just gonna do your best. All right, boys and girls, it's the end of this vlog. Another day in the life wrapped up. Hope you're enjoying these videos because really enjoying making them. They're just flowing or something, I don't know. I'm loving it. But uh, so next vlog, it's gonna be in Santorini. It's gonna be epic. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna finish things up here. Keep it real. See you then.